If you're looking to buy a lens coat, lens cover for the Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens, then stick around because hopefully I can help you out with some information. Where's that cuckoo? Yeah, um, I've just bought the um, lens coat lens cover for the Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter lens. I'm out now using it for the first time. Um, I have done a little unboxing at home, um, so we'll, we'll have a look at that first. And then afterwards I'll wrap up with some final thoughts and some extra bits of information that I've since discovered. So without further ado, let's go to the, uh, the unboxing or the, uh, the unpacking at home. Right, okay, so here is the lens coat uh, neoprene cover for the Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter L lens. Um, this one is the uh, Realtree Max 5 version, which costs a little bit more money and has the, uh, the zoom sleeve on it. So let's open it up and see what we can get. This is the code. Put up the camera if you can see that. If not, I will read it out to you. It is LC100500M5. So in the box here, or packet here, some cards on the range, some instructions, I'll pop those to one side. And what we're interested in really are the actual elements themselves. Looks like some sticky back plastic. I will follow the instructions and put them on and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Um, this is the zoom sleeve. Oh, okay, so similar kind of material. It's like a miniature buff. If you ever wear neck buffs. A little bit like that. Um, not a bad way of doing it, actually. And there we have the different components all inside, all inside here. Right, now I do happen to have a neoprene cover already on a Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter contemporary lens, not made by Lenscope, but instead made by Easy Cover. So we'll have a look at that. And we'll kind of see how that compares. So first glance, just comparing the stitching on the Lenscope, it just looks nicer. Um, and it seems to be cut nicer as well. You can see just here on this lens, so it's not quite an even cut. It's almost like someone's gone round it with a pair of a pair of scissors. In fact, on all the joins here, they're not quite uh, too neatly cut, and they're a little bit rough around the edges. These look they look better produced, actually, or, or better cut to me at first glance. In terms of the actual thickness of the neoprene. There's not much in it, but I would say that this neoprene is ever so slightly, ever so slightly thicker than the easy cover here that I've got. Um, I bought the lens coat uh, version because I wasn't 100% happy with the easy cover um, when, when I bought it last time, and I'd just rather pay a bit of extra money for what I would hope would be slightly better build quality. So let's move that plastic bag out of the way. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, in a nutshell, so what I will do now is get all of this stuff on the lens and show you what it looks like. Right, so that's the lens cover on the lens itself. And now there are a couple of things that I like about this and a couple of things that I don't. So let's talk about, first of all, the things I like. So first of all, this zoom sleeve here, I think is excellent. Um, just to let you know, it is not waterproof. Um, this might not show on camera here on, on, on this video, but it's not waterproof. So treat this as a camouflage sleeve and perhaps maybe it'll help you getting a, uh, help stop get a little bit of dust or grass um, in, uh, being sucked inside the, the lens barrel. But even then I wouldn't describe it as much of a dust seal, but it is, it is a good camouflage for the, uh, for the white zoom part of the lens. And I like the way that it zooms in and out like that and you don't have to, to touch it. Now, when you do zoom in, or zoom out, I always get those two confused. Basically, when you make it smaller, there is a bit of a, a gap there because the, um, the sleeve bunches up, so you can't fully 
uh, zoom back, but I mean, realistically, this is a telephoto lens. I'm normally using it either fully wide or pretty much at the wide end, so that is not going to bother me at all. That, that very, very small bit that I can't um, uh, uh, zoom, zoom back into. Um, so that I think is a very strong positive. Um, I think overall, the thickness of the um, neoprene is good, and I think the um, stitching um, is good. Um, a few things though that I don't like about this, and I'll try and talk you through them now. So, first of all, it could just be the copy that I've got of this. The way that the um, the window cover sits uh, on this particular lens doesn't sit quite um, quite flush with the buttons. Now, don't get me wrong, I can still see them. I can still access them and change them. It's not going to affect my use whatsoever at all. I just feel that perhaps it could have been a bit um, a bit more flush with um, where the buttons actually sit. The next thing to tell you about is, obviously there are uh, focus rings, control rings, and lock rings uh, on this lens. And when you put uh, ne this neoprene cover on, it does make them a little hard to use. So this is the, the lock ring, and it's pretty, pretty stiff. I have to really, really work at it to, uh, to, to move it. Um, you can, of course, spend a bit of time making sure that there's an even gap around each section of the cover, which will, will free it up so that you can access the, uh, the ring and move it a bit more. I haven't yet done that. I tend not to use the lock ring anyway because I find it particularly useless on this lens, for my knees anyway. So that's the first thing. Putting covers on will make it hard to, uh, to change that, to, to move that lock ring. The same with the focus ring as well. I mean, I can move it now, this one, but it's a bit stiff and I've spent a bit of time making sure that there's enough of a gap between each each section so that it's not catching and that I can turn it. And then finally, you've got the control ring here. That that that, that works pretty smoothly in itself. Now, a couple of other things that I, I don't like, and I'm just gonna take this um, tripod collar off to demonstrate. So the tripod collar itself, the camera for that, comes in the form of a, a strip which is self-adhesive, so you then have to cut it and then stick it onto this tripod collar. Um, I've had some spare, it looks naff, but I used every little bit I could, just sticking it on the end of the foot here and on the end of the, end of the hinge, just trying to make it look a little bit more, uh, more concealed. And then the other thing that I'm not keen on is, number one, there's a massive gap where the tripod foot would normally sit, which is presumably supposed to be filled by these two. This is extremely loose and will fall off, um, which leads me to think that probably when you haven't got a tripod fit on there, you're supposed to do something like this. Which is use this outer small one for the control ring um, and use it in that kind of fashion. Um, I don't think that's particularly good, if I'm honest with you. Um, and I would say that what I would have liked to have seen actually is perhaps another piece included you can swap out that's much wider that will cover this whole gap when you're not using the tripod foot. But, but there you go, um, that's it. I mean, my overall impressions are like all of these things, they are quite, they are quite expensive for what they are. In, in my opinion, and this is no different. Um, if I compare this to the, the one that I've got on the Sigma from Easy Cover, um, I have similar issues, but in, a, in an almost different kind of way. Let's pop that to one side. So, with the Easy Cover, for example, you know this doesn't fit completely fit the focus ring. Um, sorry, the zoom ring. Um, which which annoys me, and I, you know it's clearly been cut short. But that said, the window does fit better on on the switches. Other ones could be fine. It could just be that individual uh, copy that I've got. Um, yeah, but overall, am I glad I got it? Well, yeah, to be honest with you, um, and largely for this 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 zoom sleeve, I really really do like, and I can put up with the flaws down here. You know, I can maybe look out for some spare neoprene that I can stretch over or something like that. It's not a problem. I'll, I'll find something cover it but that is a great idea the reason why I think this is a good idea is if I compare this to the easy cover on the what was on the Sigma was on the barrel here they had supplied a 
a sleeve with a Velcro section on, so you'd take it out and you'd wrap it around and kind of large your, your, your sleeve, your, your zoom ring up there. The problem with that is when you've got a neoprene sleeve on, you then can't operate the lens in a zoom function. So if you need to zoom in and out quickly while on the go, you can't do that. Um, whereas with this sleeve, no problem at all. Easy peasy, nice and easy. Very, very good. I like that a lot. Another thing is that the um, neoprene cover with the Velcro, um, I've lost this one already. Um, it came off in my bag. I forgot to put it on. I had to take it off to zoom, whatever. I don't know where it is. Um, I left it. I think I left it in a wildlife um, nature reserve um, hide somewhere, um, never to be seen again. Um, so that's another reason why I like this. So yeah, the, the lens coats are significantly more expensive than the easy covers. They are probably, I'm gonna say, mm, maybe close to double actually in terms of money, but um, certainly for the, for the zoom sleeve, for the sheer convenience of it, um, I, I prefer it. And if I'm honest with you personally, I have to prefer the pattern on the lens coat as well, rather than the, um, the easy cover. Um, don't get me wrong, this looks does look a lot better when it's lying in grass. Um, much better than you might think it does, but overall I do think this pattern, and certainly for where the habitat that I live in, this, this particular pattern is, is more suited and will do a, will do a better job. So, yeah, um, overall, um, that's pretty much, uh, pretty much my summary, and I hope you found it useful. Right, so there are a couple of other things since I did the unboxing at home that I discovered whilst using it in the field, which I think I need to draw your attention to. I have made a few changes to the uh, the order of the neoprene. Now, I don't know if this is what it's supposed to be in the first place or whether this just suits me better. I did try and follow the instructions. I don't think they were completely clear. I would like to have seen all of the neoprene covers numbered so you knew which order the slide had been. It's like one, two, three, four. Some of them are cut so similar to each other that it's not often impossible to completely know which one you're, you're using. So what I've done basically is I've taken one of the thinner ones, and I've used it here on the control ring, so that I can now operate that. And as you can see that turning, relatively easy. Okay, now that left a massive gap here, which was white. So what I've done is I've slid this down further to cover that, knowing that the sleeve over here will cover over the white bit left at the top. Okay, now. Finally, the part that was here and was quite a bit thicker now lives here. So it covers over much more, much more of the lens. And once you've got the cover on, um, it can be quite difficult um, to pop the lens hood on and off with the sleeve on. And what I mean by that is, number one, you need to kind of find where the button is to start with. That's less of an issue, but because of the um, in fact, that's just snapped off. Did you hear that? It's not broken, but it might have done. So my top tip is undo the cover first before you pack the lens away, because otherwise I think you're gonna risk damaging the, uh, the lens hood. Um, with the lens sleeve on, it also makes it very difficult to put the lens hood on and off without removing and adjusting the cover, because basically when you wanna pack it away and pop the cover in the other way around, the hood is stopping you doing that without a bit of force. So you either have to end up with basically just a loose cover, like that rattling around in your bag, which is not the end of the world, or you can try and put a bit of force down on it and get it to click in like that, but it's not its not optimum. Um, and I would be worried that with a bit of a knock, it might snap off the rings. So, so do bear that in mind. That's a, that's a bit of a negative, really. That and also the fact that I think there might have been a little bit of a a place on the cover, or maybe I could mark it myself actually having thought about it, where I can remind myself where the, um, the button is to, um, to take the uh, lens cover off. Um, there is, you won't see it probably on here, but there is a small notch just there, um, which does almost line up with the red dot um, for the lens hood. So hopefully um, you'll be able to at least mount the lens hood quite quickly if you want to. Another thing I don't like, really, I think it's a bit of a bit of a miss, really, is there is no cutout for the filter trapdoor. So, more than 100 foot, 500 hood, 
don't know if you can see it here, but where the, um, where the filter trapdoor is, I would like to have seen perhaps um, a little cutout or something where you can at least access the filter door should you need to um, turn a filter. But uh, that's not included as well. But you know, it's a relatively new lens. This is obviously a relatively new product and perhaps they will improve them uh, moving forward. I should add, once you put the lens cover on, you can slide the sleeve up into a little groove right underneath here. And it does, uh, does operate relatively, uh, relatively well and relatively fine. So my final thoughts for this, um, well, it's expensive. I mean, I paid £116 for this particular one. I got it through Wex Photographic. I paid a little bit over the odds because I went for the, um, a Max 5 uh, camera pattern because it has slightly more green in the, uh, in the pattern, which I thought would perhaps better replicate the, the British Isles. It was a special order and took around about three to four weeks to arrive. From, from memory, I've got the exact timings. Obviously, I had to come from America, I had to go into Wex first and then on to me. I did look at buying it direct from the States, but figured out that it would probably be just easier and safer to perhaps buy it from Wex. And therefore, if I was really unhappy with it or something went wrong, you know, I've got a retailer in the UK that I've got a right to return it to. So um, that's the option I took. Yes, I'm very glad I bought it, just purely for the for the, for the protection that it gives you on, on the lens. I mean, this, this lens, brand new, retails at around about 3,000 UK pounds. Um, so, you know, I'm spending just just over £100, I guess, to, to protect that level of investment. And, and there is a reasonable amount of padding from the, from the neoprene. It's going to help it um, against knocks and scratches. And, yeah, if I put it down on walls and stones and, and brickwork, it's going to help protect it there. Um, this isn't the only option when it comes to um, camouflage. Obviously, there are other manufacturers out there that make uh, neoprene covers. Um, but there's also um, a way that you can um, attach uh, camo vinyl to your lens as well. It's not something that I've chosen to go with. There's a channel called uh, Whistling Wing Photography who's done that um, and he'll talk you through uh, the, the products that he's used uh, and the methods and how he's gone about doing that. I think what he does say that it's very important that you buy the right type of product and don't cheap out on the vinyl because you do want to make sure that um, you buy a product that won't leave any sticky residue when it comes to a time further down the line when you want to sell the lens or move it on and perhaps you might need to, to take the uh, the, the camouflage covering off. So um, what I'm going to do is leave a link to uh, that particular video in the description below. Um, I don't know the guy, but he comes across as, as genuine. I think he goes for the pros and cons of it. Um, I thought it wasn't for me, so I've not gone down that route, but that route may well be a better route for you. So by all means, go and check out that video and see if uh, that helps you um, in your, in your um, purchasing decision. Right, well, that's it from me. Um, if you found the video helpful, um, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, that will help uh, me understand that you enjoy the content I, I produce and uh, hopefully encourage me to produce uh, a few more a few more videos for you. Um, I will see you all in the next one. Take care everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye.